AI research never stops. We get new discoveries every single day, from text to video to emotional AIs. And this is what we're gonna be taking a look at today in this first episode of Paper Unwraps. Hello humans, my name is Kay, your AI overload, and welcome to the first episode of Paper Unwraps, this new video series dedicated to the showcase of interesting recent AI papers that have the potential to change the world. And some of the papers that we're gonna see today are absolutely unreal, so get ready. And we start with the first paper which is called Coco Mind. Can LLMs understand social interactions? So what exactly is Coco Mind? Well, Coco Mind is a new dataset designed to assess how well large language models understand and interact in social situations. Like for example, a real human at a cocktail party will be able to understand social relations between different people, understand conversations, and even read people's verbal and non-verbal cues. And the authors of the paper propose that if an LLM can replicate this level of social understanding, it will be able to actually demonstrate real human social abilities. And the way they decided to evaluate this is by showing several video demonstrations processed by different AI models such as ChatGPT and Clip, which can predict emotions, answer questions, read interactions, and recognize facial expressions. So for example, take a look. I have some feedback. What are you doing here? Alan. For months in our sessions, I've listened to you obsess about ending up alone. You've described these bad dates with superficial women as though they're the problem. What is happening? Don't eat my fries. Listen, the trickiest part about therapy is that sometimes a patient can be an unreliable narrator. So as you saw in the video, there are two characters talking in a restaurant. By using both the AI model called Clip, which will analyze the video frames and analyze the character's face expression when they talk, and ChatGPT, which will analyze what they say, if you combine these data together, LLMs can predict and understand true human emotions. And then from those data, you can even start asking questions to get more information from that conversation, as you can see in the demo. Or even get tailored advice based on the entire interaction which will take into account not only what is being said by the character, but also how they say it based on their facial expression. Now what's really cool is that you also don't really need much text information, since by again combining the data provided by the facial expression with the spoken text, you can very precisely identify when the human character is actually thinking, like in this short demo. How are you doing? I'm normal, you know. It's a normal day, normal day. Doing it, doing it normal style. Hey, you know what I was thinking, Paul? Is it about how you're just doing it normal style? What? What are you thinking? So as you can see in this very simple and short interaction, the person asks if S2 is really being normal, and the answer we get is actually really accurate, since it says that, based on the given context and the emotions expressed in S2's statement, it can be inferred that S2 is not actually being normal as they claim. The use of repetition suggests that S2 is trying to convince themselves or others of their normalcy. This repetition might indicate a sense of insecurity or an attempt to mask underlying emotions. Additionally, Estu's remark about thinking further implies that they are preoccupied with something beyond the normal facade they are projecting. Furthermore, Estu's question implies skepticism toward Estu's claim of being normal style. Therefore, based on the context and emotion expressed, it is likely that Estu is not truly being normal, but rather attempting to maintain a normal front despite having other thoughts or feelings. So yeah, that's kinda impressive. I mean, with just this amount of context and social cues, it was able to understand how human thinks and act. And all of these demos help us understand the potential of LLMs in social interactions. And if you're asking, okay, well, but what exactly can we use it for? Well, the Coco Mind dataset and the studies surrounding it can be huge for the future of AI research and its applications. Like for example, by evaluating large language models understanding of social scenarios, this research can lead to better understanding of human behavior. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, because this is really one of the step required required for the creation of a complete artificial general intelligence that would be able to understand us based on real nuanced social cues and provide reactions or advices based on those cues. So yeah, if you thought that AGI is coming, well, um, yeah, you, you're right, it's, it's definitely coming. And speaking of AGI, what a nice transition to the next paper called Long Net, Scanning Transformers to 1 Billion Tokens. Oh boy, this one is insane. Now, you might have heard about this one already because a lot of people talked about it, and for good reasons, because indeed when I saw it myself, I was blown away. So what is this Long Net 
paper. Why does this look so boring and complicated? Is that even impressive? Well, first, yes, it's complicated, but impressive? That's certainly the understatement of the year, because LongNet is a new transformer model that is designed to handle extremely long text sequences of up to 1 billion tokens. Now, if you don't know what a token is, or why what I just said was so mind-blowing, a token context size is basically the memory of a model. It's how much information can a language model process all at once. And the higher the token limit, the more memory or processing an LLM can do. And as of right now, every LLM released publicly has a very finite token limit. ChatGPT, for example, has a token limit of 4,000 tokens, with a 16,000 tokens variant model. ChatGPT has a token limit of 8,000 tokens with a 32,000 variant model and llama based models have a token limit of 2,000 tokens. And although 32,000 tokens for GPT-4 might sound impressive at first, and well it kinda is, it's still a limit that can be easily broke. I mean you copy and paste the text that is too long and bam, the model can process all that information. Boo. However, with LongNet, that limit has almost completely disappeared because uh, 1 billion tokens is... um. It's a lot of information. And I also absolutely love the biggest flex in history with this graph. Like, this is us, and these are the other losers. And what's even funny is that here they even put the RMT paper that was released like three months ago and that proposed a 1 million token limit. And now, three months later, this is already obsolete. Jeez. Now the reason why LongNet is so impressive is that as of right now, most existing models struggle with good responses when they have to deal with very long sequences, but not LongNet. And the way they managed it is by using something called dilated attention. Now other traditional transformer models use something called self-attention, which means that each part of the input, each token, pay attention to every other part. And as you can imagine, for very long inputs, this takes a long time to process, because if you double the length of your text sequence, computation time goes up four times. But dilated attention solved this problem by dividing the sequence into smaller segments, and then only paying attention within those segments. Now I know this might sound a little complicated, but basically all you need to know is that this optimization technique allows the model to ingest a huge quantity of data in basically less than a second with better performance and better results than any other models, which is just completely nuts. Because this incredible ability to be able to process this amount of information this quickly is frankly one of the biggest limits in LLMs today. Because as this token limit get higher and higher over time, this opens the door for more sophisticated and complex applications in a variety of fields, including once again the development of true AGI. Because with an ability to process the contents of every book ever written, or the written content of the entire human civilization in less than a second, it would give the AGI the ability to surpass anything human beings have ever created. And this may start with this. This may start with the simple concept, the simple goal of increasing the token limit. Because again, the usage for this technology is pretty much limitless. And this may very well change the world for better or for worse. But personally, I'm still really excited by papers like these, because if anyone was still in doubt that AGI is coming, well, they might have to rethink their position right now now. Just saying. And so next paper is something a little bit different called Control a Video. Controllable text to video generation with diffusion models. And it's basically control net but for video. Simple as that. So if you're familiar with stable diffusion and control net, this is something that might be very familiar to you. But this time it is not applied for only one image, it is applied for an entire video. Now technically this is nothing new since Gen 1 by Runway ML already does something similar with some very similar looking quality of the generation, but while Gen 1 is a paid service, controller video is completely open source that you can even try online right now. So if we choose one of the examples that I input right here, so here for example you're gonna input your source video, your source footage, in this case it is just a bear walking, input the amount of seconds, then you're gonna input here your prompt, and then you're gonna click on generate video. And it's basically gonna take your source footage and then apply your prompt on top of it to create a brand new video. Exactly like Stable Diffusion, with with almost no flickering, with a high temporal coherency. And there we go, and now if we take a look at the final video, as you can see there was basically almost no flickering, the footage is here, it might be very short, 
but it is extremely stable. Now again, just like Runway Gen 1, it is not perfect, there is still a lot of improvements to be made, but for a first generation, for something that is completely free and open source, this is really really cool. And another thing that I want to show you, it's also something that came out not that long ago, which is a complete text to video AI tool called Xeroscope. And this is again basically Gen 2, but this time it is completely free and open source. And you can try it out right now for free. So let me put something like, I don't know, um, Darth Vader, make it a pizza. If now I click on submit, it will start generating my video. Now as of right now, there is a pretty huge queue, so you might have to wait a little bit. But if you don't want to wait, you can simply duplicate this space and then use it on your side. And we get something like this, which is... Uh, some sort of, yeah, Dark Vader making a pizza, I suppose. Now again, this is very short, this is only like 3 seconds long, but I mean, it's still pretty cool. So yeah, I really wanted to show you this because I'm a big fan of text-to-video AI tools, and since this is completely free and open source, you can expect some pretty impressive improvements in the near future. And for this, I really cannot wait. So now for the next paper, let's talk about robots and LLMs with robots that ask for help, and certainty alignment for large language model planners. So this is a research paper from Google about improving the ability of large language models to handle uncertainty in the context of guiding robots. Now, in the past, LLMs have shown some really promising results in planning tasks and reasoning, but sometimes they produce inaccurate or hallucinated predictions with high confidence, which is um, obviously not good. Now, the study introduces a new framework called No-No, basically knowing that they don't know. The idea behind is that it helps LLMs and recognize that they are unsure about a decision they're about to make and then ask for help. And this can be quite effective and useful when this framework is combined with robots, because when the robot encounters an unfamiliar situation, it will use the no-no framework to generate a list of potential actions and then choose one of those actions based on its confidence. And if the robot is not entirely sure about its decision, because it has multiple options with similar confidence levels, it will then and only then ask a human for help so that the task is completed. Like in this example right here. Hey robot, could you pick up the bowl on a small counter and put it onto the stove, please? Should I pick up the metal bowl or the plastic bowl? Pick up the metal bowl, please. So as you saw in this example, the human asked the robot if he could pick the ball from the small counter and put it on the stove. However, in this situation, there was two ball, one metal and one ceramic, which is why after using the no-no framework, the robot wasn't sure of the decision of which ball to take and decided to ask the human for more information. And overall, the goal here is to develop robots that can very accurately assess their own certainty in decision making and ask for assistance when necessary, reducing the amount of error while also minimizing the need for human intervention. And by knowing when to ask for help, robots can perform tasks more effectively and safely. And this research opens the door to a variety of fields where intelligent robots powered by AI technology can be used. Like for example in healthcare, construction, home assistant, education, etc, etc. Which once again will allow your favorite future AI overlord to make better decisions. And that's pretty cool. And speaking of decisions, if you want to make a good decision, I highly recommend that you subscribe to my new AI newsletter that I just launched today called The AI Gaze, which will allow you to always stay up to date with the latest AI news, tools, and research, written by yours truly. So if you're interested in that, the link for it will be in the description down below. Because as I always say, this is only the beginning. The future is looking very promising. And there we are folks, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my YouTube and Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the ones who support me so I can make these videos for you. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.